during the Boston bombings, Dan Badani made the term false flag a household word. That was a very important thing because it takes the power away from the governments that use that technique. It's not just the Reichstag fire, it's been used many times. And we've got a filmmaker in the UK that we're going to be talking to right now, Tony Rook. And he's bringing awareness to the term false flag in the UK with his films about 9 11 truth. Joining us from the UK is Tony Rook. Welcome, Tony. Welcome back. Hi, David. Uh, now, you've had an interesting follow up, but let's, let's get people brought up to what got us to interview you the very first time, and that is your complaints to the BBC, and, and you made an issue out of not paying the licensing fee. People in the U.S. may not realize it, but everyone in the U.K., if they have a television set, has to pay a licensing fee to the BBC. You refuse to pay that on principle. Tell us why you refuse to pay that on principle. Uh, well, a quick, quick resume of the BBC case. I ended up in court because, yeah, as you say, I refused to pay the £145 for the licence fee that you have to have here for the privilege of watching the television uh, and ended up in court. Now, I was withholding my licence fee under legislation called the Terrorism Act 2006, which we have here, which very clearly prescribes if you have reasonable cause to believe you may be funding the purposes of terrorism, then you don't pay. Mm -hmm. and, and I've been studying 9-11 for some years now and obviously because the the BBC broadcast the uh, collapse of World Trade Center 7 23 minutes before it occurred uh, it has since uh, you know embarked upon this shocking propaganda campaign trying to cover up uh, the reasons for the collapse of World Trade Center 7 which I have reasonable cause to believe was a controlled demolition. Exactly. Let's, um, let's hold it right there because the, yeah. uh, they, when they did that report, the BBC reporter, amazingly, as many people pointed out, and it's been seen over and over again, uh, most, most truthers know it because it's a key piece of evidence, she's reporting the collapse of World Trade Center 7 20 minutes before it happens, and you can see it over her shoulder as she's talking about it. Now, you went in and you talked to the judge and you presented some information to them, and uh, we've, got some, we've got a clip of that uh, that we want to show right here is what you showed to the judges off of uh, your YouTube video. Okay. We all remember how the Twin Towers were destroyed on 9-11, but there was a third huge skyscraper that collapsed that day. What could cause a seemingly sound 47-story building to collapse? We are walking back. It's a building about to blow up. So that's an interesting clip where you juxtaposition what the BBC is saying with what actually happened. You show how they manipulated it. They edited out sound effects of the, uh, uh, you can hear a bomb exploding in the background. You can hear additional comments on the CNN footage about people saying, get back, we're going to blow this up. They doctored that, right? Yeah, I mean, the nicest thing you could say about it was that it was very careful editing. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd call it propaganda uh, by omission. Yeah, well, it wasn't even cutting stuff. I mean, it was taking out sounds. You're taking out an explosion sound that's in the background. Yeah, yeah, they clipped that, and um, the, the judge said he'd seen uh, all the evidence that we submitted before trial, and, and there was a lot. There was a lot of hard copy, and, and, and that little piece that you've shown was, was just part of an hour-long uh, DVD, which I submitted, which was 99% of it was concentrated on World Trade Center 7, and the BBC's very selective um, editing and uh, broadcast of, of, of material, which you... <clears throat> which was, a, you know, very much cherry-picked, uh, so gave a very false impression of the day. So you've been working on things, uh, this is the, actually the third project that you've got coming up, because you had the incident there with the BBC and uh, giving the evidence to the judge. You also had a documentary film about Tony Farrell, who was a police detective who began his own investigation, looked at the evidence, took it to supervisors, and their reaction was to dismiss him. They didn't even mention the, the, the evidence that, that he was, um, you know, highlighting in his job. He'd, he'd been in a uh, senior intelligence officer, analyst for uh, South Yorkshire Police for over a decade. 
and and had come to the opinion that 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 9/11 just simply wasn't as advertised, and and the same for the London bombings, for that matter. And um, and you know put this forward to you know, his hierarchy, and they and they said, Tony, we 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 can't we, we can't work like this. I think one of them is even on record as saying that um, you know you may well be correct, but uh, we are we are only the government foot soldiers. Well, it was a great documentary that you did with Tony because what you did was you followed his journey of discovery, basically in retrospect, and you showed a person of principle following the evidence, saying why he believed that and. Amazingly, they dismiss him for that. But now that you've gone to a judge and you've given him the evidence as part of this BBC case, you've followed this case of the active duty policeman, now you're looking to fund another film where you're basically going to go to retired policemen, retired judges who don't have anything to lose, who can not have the pressures of their job being threatened if they take a close look at this evidence. The, the, the idea is that, yes, pe people who have not got anything to lose if you like that they the, the job is over once you explain this to people once you show these declassified documents the fact that operation gladio was thoroughly investigated by the italian government operation northwoods has been declassified by the cia it's an exact template for 9-11 except that we have a different boogeyman instead of it being blamed on castro's communists in cuba it's being blamed on al-qaeda when you start to show this to people it starts to click with them. They see the M.O. They see a repeated uh, thing that the government is doing each time. They understand that it's false flags are not just the Reichstag fire. And you went in and talked to a police chief, is that correct? Uh, a district commander. Yeah, um, amazingly, I, I got a phone call um, a couple of months ago, David, and it was a police officer from, from my local station. Um, I submitted some hard copy evidence to my local police before the BBC trial. Um, which I wanted them to follow up, obviously it's their job. And he rang me up to tell me um, that I could have it back. And I, and I said, well, I don't want it back, I want you to act on it. And to cut a very long story short, we ended up getting into a conversation, funnily enough, on Operation Northwards. Um, and I said, have you heard of it? He said, no, I've not heard of it. And I said, well, I think that's, I, did, I didn't want to be rude, but I, I said, I think you should have heard of it, being a police officer, because it, it demonstrates that you know that the, the, the governments, the American government, has previous, as, as we call it, um, and and they should have been investigated immediately um, after 9/11, and 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 the same with Operation Gladio in Europe. And he was quite shocked. And right. about an hour later, he called me back and and told me that I had an interview with <laughs> with the uh, the local district commander. Now, whether or not this was directly related to that, I know that Matt Campbell, who's um, who's on board with the film Incontrovertible, he, he's the, going to be the main protagonist. Matt lost his brother in the World Trade Center. He's also been pestering our local police force. And you said and he just got back the coroner's report after 12 years. He just got the coroner's report from the U.S. Yeah, Matt, Matt's just got some, some materials back on, on his brother. And, and I've seen the photographs, and I, I don't want to get too, too detailed on it, right. but um, it, it certainly seems consistent with some explosives going off. So I want to talk about your film oh. here, Incontrovertible, that's coming up. You're trying to get filming uh, funding for it. And, of course, some traditional venues that people go to to get crowdfunding, they don't want to have anything to do with a 9-11 investigation. So I want to make sure that people have your website, Killing Auntie Films. Dot co dot uk and just to explain that to audiences in the u.s uh anti or auntie is a nickname for the bbc so that's mm. uh, a u n t i e uh, yeah. killing auntie films dot co dot uk they can help to fund the film that you're trying to get and you're trying to do a court uh appearance essentially right it's kind of a court trial with these judges and police officers yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get a dozen together for obvious reasons. That's that's the number everyone identifies with. Mm -hmm. uh, jury. Police officers, clergy, um, some some former soldiers and sailors. You know, people who have law enforcers, if you like, the clergy mm -hmm. being moral law enforcers, the soldiers being military enforcers, and of course the police. Um, and, and show them this stuff and, and, and have it on camera. I want to see their reactions to this. And then, and then once we, we've got them, then, then take it to serving officers. And, you know, I recently had an interview with, with, with the, on my local district commander, and she liked the idea. She mm -hmm. really liked the idea. I think it's a wonderful idea to have that trial, 
to show people who are men of integrity, who know how to look at an investigation, and to film them being presented with the evidence to see their reactions. I think that would be a very valuable thing. I hope people will go to your website and help to fund that project. It would be a fascinating thing to see and, and very helpful for all of us, I think. Yeah, it, it, it'd be certainly an interesting dynamic to watch to see these guys sort of w waking up on film and realizing just who they've been working for over the years. That's, that's, um, that's, that's, a, that's a sad thing as well. That's true. And, and I'm glad to see that you're including clergy in there. In history, we've had William Wilberforce, who for his entire life stood against slavery. And mm -hmm. it took him an entire lifetime to fight against it, but he was tireless. And he was told at the beginning when he became a Christian, he was going to go in the ministry. And he was told by uh, John Newton, who wrote Amazing Grace, no, what you're doing is just as important. So we want people to, to take moral leadership, and, and I really thank you for doing that. And the kind of background that you've had with a father who was a detective, who wanted to look at things honestly, the story that you've already covered with Tony Farrell, that's a great documentary. People should check that out. They can see that at your website, is that correct? Uh, yeah, it's called Defensive, uh, the story of Tony Farrell. And um, yeah, thanks. It's, yeah, Tony's story is fascinating. He's a very brave guy and a, and a, and a fine Christian. Great, great. So that's killingantifilms.co.uk. People can go there, watch what you've already done, and they can fund this very important film that you're trying to get off the ground, incontrovertible. Thank yeah, you, Tony. Um, thank you very much indeed, David, again. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Well, it's very important to help fund filmmakers, to support them. That's why we already have State of Mind on the Internet. But if you want to support the filmmakers, get a DVD, pass it around, help to wake people up. And that's exactly what Tony Rook is trying to do with his film, Incontrovertible. So take a look at his website, killingantifilms.co.uk. Support him in this effort, and support us in our effort to wake people up at Prison Planet TV. You can become a subscriber, and up to 10 other people that you give the password to can watch at the same time. All of this is helping to wake people up, and the only way that we can do that is if you help to fund our operation, if you help to fund filmmakers who are trying to get the truth out there. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.